So now we're at the stage of running a binomial test, which is a type of hypothesis test. Um, as you're, you're probably guessing, this involves the binomial distribution. And so this only works for certain types of tests in which we have uh, situations that result in either a success or failure. So for a second, let's reimagine this idea of this population that we're trying to make a conclusion about. So what we have is some, um, in, in truth, there's some true population proportion. True population proportion, or percentage if you prefer. It just doesn't need to be a percentage. It could be a decimal or a fraction. Now, we're, we, of course, don't know truth, because if we did, we wouldn't have to run any tests to begin with. We could just sample everyone in the population. But what's going to happen is we're going to take a random sample. So in this sample, um, we are, uh, I believe we used P earlier, but that gets a little bit confusing, because in the binomial uh, distribution, we also have a, a P, and I don't want those two to be mistaken. So the estimate from the sample that we gain, we call pi hat. So I'll just write that over here, pi hat. So that's a quote, uh, quotes right there. So you would pronounce that as pi hat. So this is an estimate of uh, the true population proportion. So pi hat is an estimate of pi. Okay, well, so since pi is the true population proportion, we're trying to estimate it and trying to make some grander conclusions about it. There's a little problem here. Well, we have an idea uh, called sampling variability, which basically means the idea that even though we have a random representative sample from the population, which we call pi hat, the sample proportion can vary from sample to sample. So we uh, face the dilemma that, yes, in this sample that we collect, um, so let's just say that you have um, pi in reality, which we don't know. Let's just say you had 0.5, a, a population of a proportion of 0.5. Well, in sample 1, you might get an estimator or an estimate of 0.47, which is slightly below because you're drawing from a random sample. Now, yes, it's truly representative, but you get sampling variability. So maybe in a different sample that you collected, you found that pi hat is equal to 0.62. And maybe in yet another sample, you'd find that pi hat is equal to 0.4. Well, to some extent, yes, we would expect sampling variability, this idea that it can vary from sample to sample, and we never know which sample we're going to get. So if we see 0.62, we may say, you know what, that's higher than 0.5. But due to sampling variability, this might not be that unlikely to observe. So the question then becomes, how do we know when to reject a null hypothesis? In other words, if we, want to, if we want to test the hypothesis that pi is greater than 0.5, if we observe 0.62, is that enough to reject and say, yes, we believe the population is, um, has a population proportion greater than 0.5? Or, um, you know, I mean, does 0.47 mean that the, sam the population proportion is not greater than 0.5? Well, we expect the sampling variability, and somehow we have to come up with a deciding factor of when to reject. So what's the issue with just picking a value subjectively? Well, there's likelihood for error. So if you think about it this way, now first of all, uh, think about a court case. Okay, so in a court case, the verdict and the truth are two things which hopefully jive together. So um, what we can really do, I'm getting ahead of myself here, is the jury will either con uh, say not guilty or they'll say guilty. Now notice that they never say innocent. Why not? Well, just because you can't prove that somebody's guilty doesn't mean that they're not guilty. Um, take O.J. Simpson, for example. Um, I believe he came, later out, uh, came out later and said that he, that he did it, but they couldn't put him in, into trial again uh, due to double jeopardy. So in reality, the person is either innocent or guilty.